is God, the mighty God, the great King over all of the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him, the dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Bending the knee before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are His people, the flock He shepherds. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts as your fathers did in the wilderness. When at Meribah and Massah, they challenged me and broke me, although they had seen all of my works. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come, now and forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord, and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are. Clothed in majesty and glory, wrapped in light as in a robe. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. Above the rains you build your dwelling. You make the clouds your chariot. You walk on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, and flashing fire your servants. You founded the earth on its base, to stand firm from age to age. You wrapped it with the ocean like a cloak. The water stood higher than the mountains. At your threat they took to flight, at the voice of your thunder they fled. They rose over the mountains and flowed down to the place which you had appointed. You set limits they might not pass, lest they return to cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valley. They flow in between the hills. They give drink to all the beasts of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. On their banks dwell the birds of heaven. From the branches they sing their song. From your dwelling you water the hills. Earth drinks its fill of your gift. You made the grass grow for the cattle, and the plants to serve man's needs. That he may bring forth bread from the earth, and wine to cheer man's heart. Oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord drink their fill, the cedars he planted on Lebanon. There the birds build their nests, 
on the tree that the stork has her home. The goats find a home on the mountains, and rabbits hide in the rocks. He made a moon to mark the months. The sun knows the time for its setting. When you spread the darkness, it is night, and all the beasts of the forest creep close. The young lions roar for their prey and as their food from God. At the rising of the sun they steal away, and go to rest in their dens. Man goes forth to his work, to labor till evening falls. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches, there is the sea vast and wide, with its moving swarms past counting, living things great and small. The ships are moving there, and the monsters you made to play with, all of these look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it, they gather it up. You open your hand, they have their fill. You hide your face, they are dismayed. You take back your spirit, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. The mountains send forth smoke at his touch. I will sing to the Lord all my life. Make music to my God while I live. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find my joy in the Lord. Let sinners vanish from the earth, and the wicked exist no more. Bless the Lord, my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come, now and forever. Amen. You send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. From the beginning of the first book of Maccabees. After Alexander the Macedonian, Philip's son, who came from the land of Crete, had defeated Darius, king of the Persians and the Medes. He became king in his place, having first ruled in Greece. He fought many campaigns, captured fortresses, and put kings to death. He advanced to the ends of the earth, gathering plunder for many nations. The earth fell silent before him and his heart became proud and arrogant. He collected a very strong army and conquered provinces, nations, and rulers, and they became his tributary. After all this, he took to his bed, realizing that he was going to die. He therefore summoned his officers and nobles, who had been brought up with him from his youth, to divide his kingdom among them while he was still alive. Alexander had reigned twelve years when he died. He took all his officers, so his officers took over his kingdom, each in his own territory, and after his death they all put on royal crowns, and so did their sons after them for many years, causing much distress over the earth. There sprang from these a sinful offshoot, Antiochus Epiphanes, king of kings, son of King Antiochus. 
once a hostage at Rome. He became king in the year 137 of the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days there appeared in Israel men who were breakers of the law, and they seduced many people, saying, Let us go and make an alliance with the Gentiles all around us. Since we separated from them, many evils have come upon us. The proposal was agreeable. Some from among the people promptly went to the king, and he authorized them to introduce the way of living of the Gentiles. Thereupon they built a gymnasium in Jerusalem, according to the Gentile custom. They covered over the mark of their circumcision and abandoned the holy covenant. They allied themselves with the Gentiles and sold themselves to wrongdoing. When his kingdom seemed secure, Antiochus proposed to become king of Egypt, so as to rule over both kingdoms. He invaded Egypt with a strong force, with chariots and elephants, and with a large fleet to make war on Ptolemy, king of Egypt. Ptolemy was frightened at his presence and fled, leaving many casualties. The fortified cities in the land of Egypt were captured, and Antiochus plundered the land of Egypt. After Antiochus had defeated Egypt in the year 143, he returned and went up to Israel and to Jerusalem with a strong force. He, insol he insolently invaded the sanctuary and took away the golden altar, the lampstand for the light, with all its fixtures, the offering table, the cups and bowls, the golden censers, the curtain, the crowns, and the golden ornament on the facade of the temple. He stripped off everything and took away the gold and silver and the precious vessels. He also took all the hidden treasures he could find. Taking all this, he went back to his own country after he had spoken with great arrogance and shed much blood. From the Pastoral Constitution on the Church in the Modern World of the Second Vatican Council. Peace is not the mere absence of war or the simple maintenance of a balance of power between forces, nor can it be imposed at the dictate of absolute power. It is called, rightly and properly, a work of justice. It is the product of order, the order implanted in a human society by its divine founder, to be realized in practice as men hunger and thirst for ever more perfect justice. The common good of the human race is subject to the eternal law as its primary principle, but its requirements in practice keep changing with the passage of time. The result is that peace is never established finally and forever. The building up of peace has to go on all the time. Again, the human will is weak and wounded by sin. The search for peace, therefore, demands from each individual constant control of the passions and, from legitimate authority, untiring vigilance. Even this is not enough. Peace here on earth cannot be maintained unless the good of the human person is safeguarded, and men are willing to trust each other and share their riches of spirit and talent. If peace is to be established, it is absolutely necessary to have a firm determination to respect other persons and peoples and their dignity, and to be zealous in the practice of brotherhood. Peace is, therefore, the fruit also of love. Love goes beyond what justice can achieve. Peace on earth, born of love for one's neighbor, is the sign and the effect of the peace of Christ that flows from God the Father. In his own person, the incarnate Son, the Prince of Peace, reconciled all men to God through his death on the cross. 
In his human nature, he destroyed hatred and restored unity to all mankind in one person and one body. Raised on high by the resurrection, he sent the spirit of love into the hearts of men. All Christians are thus urgently summoned to live the truth in love and to join all true peacemakers in prayer and work for peace. Moved by the same spirit, we cannot but praise those who renounce violence in defense of rights and have recourse to means of defense otherwise available to the less powerful as well, provided that this can be done without injury to the rights and obligations of others or of the community. will appear to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. O Lord, have pity on us, for you we wait. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of trouble. At the roaring sound people sleep, when you rise in your majesty, nations are scattered. Men gather spoil as caterpillars are gathered up. They rush upon it like the onrush of locusts. The Lord is exalted, enthroned on high. He fills Zion with right and justice. That which makes her seasons lasting, the riches that save her are wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is her treasure. See the men of burial cry out in the streets. The messengers of Shalem weep bitterly. The highways are desolate. Travelers have quit the paths. Covenants are broken. Their terms are spread. Yet no man gives it a thought. The country languishes in mourning. Lebanon withers with shame. Sharon is like the step. Bashan and Carmel are stripped bare. Now will I rise up, says the Lord. Now will I be exalted. Now be lifted up. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. To God who is, who was, and who is to come, now and forever. Amen. Christ will appear to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. Hear you who are far off what I have done. You who are near, acknowledge my might. On Zion sinners are in dread, trembling grips the impure. Who of us can live with the consuming fire? Who of us can live with the everlasting flames? He who practices virtue and speaks honestly, who spurns what is gained by oppression, brushing his hands free of contact with the blind, stopping his ears lest he hear of bloodshed, closing his eyes lest he look on evil. He shall dwell on the high. His stronghold shall be the rock he trusted. 
His food and drink in steady supply. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come, now and forever. Amen. The bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. May you know what are the riches of his glorious inheritance. Come to our aid, O God of the universe, and put all the nations in dread of you. Place your hand against the heathen, that they may realize your power, as you have used us to show them your holiness. So now use them to show us your glory. Thus they will know as we know that there is no God but you. Give no signs and work no wonders. Show forth the splendor of your right hand and arm. Rouse your anger, pour out wrath. Humble the enemy, scatter the foe. Hasten the day, bring on the time. Crush the heads of the hostile rulers. Let raging fire consume the fugitive, and your people's oppressors meet destruction. Gather all the tribes of Jacob, that they may inherit the land as of old. Show mercy to the people called by your name, Israel, whom you named your firstborn. Take pity on your holy city, Jerusalem, your dwelling place. Fill Zion with your majesty, your temple with your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come, now and forever. Amen. May you know what are the riches of his glorious inheritance. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, even though the disciples had locked the doors of the place where they were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. At the sight of the Lord, the disciples rejoiced. Peace be with you, he said again. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive men's sins, they are forgiven them. If you hold them bound, they are held bound. It happened that one of the twelve, Thomas, the name means twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, We have seen the Lord. And his answer was, I will never believe it without holding the nail prints in his hands, without putting my finger in the nail marks, and my hand into his side. A week later, the disciples were once more in the room, and this time Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. Then to Thomas,
thumbless. Take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand into my side. Do not persist in your disunbelief, but believe. Thomas said in response, My Lord and my God. Jesus then said to him, You became a believer because you saw me. Blessed are they who have not seen and have believed. Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs that recorded him in the presence of his disciples. But these have been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, so that through this faith you may have life in his name. Assistance be always with us, and also with our brothers and sisters. 